Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom and today we're going to be talking about chapter 7-5, uh, amortization. Uh, so this is a type of loan that's very common that many of us have already uh, used to buy a car, maybe a house, maybe a boat. Um, so this is the process of paying off a loan plus interest by making a series of regular equal payments. Um, and it's called amortization or an amortized loan if we're talking about the loan. So let's take a look at the formula here. Uh, you notice this is a pretty big formula, uh, but it's, it's nothing that we haven't already looked at. You can see this right side here is really just our annuity formula, and this left side here is just really our compound interest formula. So when we set those equal to each other, uh, we're going to get this amortized loan. Um, and so let's take a look at an example and see how we can uh, plug these variables in. Remember, these variables are the same ones that we've already been using for our other formulas. Um, so assume that you have taken out an amortized loan for $25,000 to buy a new truck. The annual interest rate is 24% and the loan is for six years. What is your monthly payment? That's a pretty common type of loan and amount. The 24 interest rate is pretty high. Uh, normally, it's going to be around 8 to 10 percent, depending on your uh, credit rating when you actually uh, buy a vehicle. But uh, this is going to assume a larger interest rate. Let's first identify our variables. The rate is 24 percent, which is 0 0.24. There's 12. Uh, payments per year since it's compounds monthly so our M is 12 our R over M is going to be 0 0.02 which we're going to use in quite a few places um, the P that's the principal or in this case the amount of the loan which is $25,000 you can think of it also as the the portion of the total which is not the interest so this would be the principal of 25,000 the big R is our payment, and that's what we're going to solve for. And the little n is the total number of payments. We can find this by doing little m times t, where t is the number of years, uh, which gives us a total of 72. All right, so now let's go ahead and plug in our variables and solve for the unknown. So the left side here, uh, remember where there was the R over m, I'm just going to plug in the 0 0.02. So this is what we get. And for the right side here, once again, the 0.02 is the R over M. It just makes it a lot easier than trying to put that fraction in everywhere. And we are solving for the R. So the idea here is to figure out what this total is going to be using the order of operations. Remember, parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication. And then over here, using order of operations. So parentheses, exponent, uh, we do the numerator, and then we're going to divide by the nom denominator, and we should get two totals, which we do down here. You divide uh, both sides by the number next to your variable, which is the 158.0570188, and you're going to get an approximate monthly payment of $658.17. It's a quite a large payment for a six-year loan, so you can see that that interest rate really had a large bearing on our, on our answer here. All right, so let's look at constructing an amortization loan. Uh, this is uh, how the loan gets paid month by month. You've probably heard this uh, about buying a house, and that is the first few years. Your payments are mainly going towards the interest, and the last few years of your loan, your payments are mainly going towards the principal, and this is going to show you how that works. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, do one here. So suppose you finance a new house for $210,000. You obtain a 30-year mortgage at an annual rate of 4.5%, which is a monthly payment of $1,064.04. You might want to try to use that formula before to see if you can verify that. Uh, that's what I did in order to get this $1,064.04. And we're going to construct a, an amortization schedule for the first three payments. Remember, 
there's going to be a lot of payments. This is 30 years times 12. So you're looking at 360 total payments you're going to make over the course of this loan. So just looking at the three, we're going to see how much goes towards interest and how much goes towards principal. All right. So uh, since the annual interest rate is 4.5%, uh, that's over the year, um, then our monthly interest rate is just that divided by 12, which comes out to the 0 0.00375. Therefore, if the interest rate for that is each month, then the first month, our total interest that we're paying is that interest rate, the 0 0.00375 times the total amount of the loan, the $210,000, which comes out to $787.50. That's a lot of interest that we're paying that first month. Now remember, our payment that we made was $1,064.04. Uh, so since $787.50 went to interest, we just find the difference between these two figures to find out how much actually went to the principal. And in this case, only $276.54 went to pay the actual loan. Um, so this is going to bring our principal down to $209,723.46. Because remember, since we paid $276.54 to the principal, we just subtract that from the total amount of the principal to find our new principal. And we're going to use this same type of operation for each month. And I did a little chart here. This is very similar to the one in the book. So if you're having any trouble understanding this, I'll take a look at 7.5 and they have uh, another amortization schedule there. So here's our original balance. Uh, so month one, our total payment that we made was this. This is how much went to interest. This is how much went to principal. And you take this off of that and you get your new principal balance of this. So the second month, we're kind of doing the same thing. We're going to multiply this new balance by the 0.00375. I think that's what it was because uh, that's our monthly interest rate. Um, this is going to be our new amount of interest. Notice it's slightly less than our first month. Why? Because our principal balance is slightly less. Um, so this is our monthly payment. So you can see a little tiny bit more, about a dollar more went to principal. And so that brings our principal down by a little bit more. And you can see that the third month is the same way. We're paying a little bit less on interest. We're paying a little bit more on principal and our total balance is going down. And if you can speculate towards the end of this 360 payment loan, uh, it's going to kind of look reversed at the end. At the end, our, we're going to be paying just a little bit for interest and a whole lot for principal. All right. Um, so let's do the last thing here. This is finding the present value of an annuity. Uh, so we can find the present value of an annuity by taking the amortization formula and solving for P, which is kind of our principal here. Um, so, once again, instead of the R that we did in the beginning, we're going to now do for the P, it's going to be the same kind of thing. So, let's see if you can uh, do this uh, on your own and then come back here and then we'll walk through it. But suppose you want to know what kind of car that you can afford. You're willing to pay $300 per month for a five-year loan and you found a dealership that offers a five-year car loan uh, with an annual rate of 9%. So what price car can you afford? So go ahead and see what you can do and see what you come up with. All right, and kind of like what we did with the previous chapter, um, sometimes it's helpful to make a quick calculation just without the interest to see around what our answer should be or what the minimum or the maximum that it should be. Now, since there's 60 months in five years, because five times 12 is 60, um, and we're making $300 payments, we're making 60 of those $300 payments. So the total amount of payments that we're gonna be making over the five year period is $18,000. Now that's gonna be, that's if the 
uh, car place, the uh, dealership, did a 0% interest, this would be the amount of the car that we could afford is $18,000. But we all know that not too many dealerships have a 0% interest for five years. So our amount that we can spend on our car is definitely going to be less than that because some of our payments are going to be going towards paying that interest. So but the $18,000 gives us a good idea. So that should tell us that if we can get a really low interest rate, we're going to get a car that's going to be pretty close to that $18,000. But if we're going to get a much higher interest rate, it's going to be a considerably less than that $18,000. So that just kind of gives you an idea what your maximum uh, amount of the car based off of the lowest possible interest. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this thing. So we have that big formula here. Uh, we are solving for P. And notice what I did here. Um, I just divided both sides. If I go back up to the formula here, I divided both sides by this thing here, the 1 plus R over M to the N. Uh, that way, I can solve strictly for P. So I made that division, and I get this big formula here. I'm going to plug in all of my figures here. I'm going to perform the correct op order of operations by doing everything in the parentheses and then the exponents and then the dividing and then the multiplying. And I should get, with a 9% interest rate, a maximum of $14,452.01. And that means that I shouldn't be looking at cars that cost any more than that if I want to keep my payments to $300 per month. All right, well, uh, that's it for this section. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you.